My name is Josh Weber. Mike Montesa. Kanye kind of listening. Y'all know me as Debo. Excellent. Here you go, party girls. One West Magazine. One West Magazine. Let me say that with confidence. One West Magazine. Y'all better support them. Check it out. My name is Josh Weber. You're here at the Dear Frank World premiere, and you guys are in for an incredible experience. Go check out the movie Dear Frank. Um, hopefully, by the time you see this, it'll be available in a city near you. If not, go check it out online. Um, DearFrankTheMovie.com. Thank you. We out here with One West Magazine. Is going down. XO like the drug. A sound stand up. Money mud. Here, dear friend. This my year. You can't tell me nothing. Got a baby out the west. Turn up into something. Why these niggas out here hating? You know how I'm coming. I ain't worried about a thing. All my niggas stuck in. Uh, big bank take love bang, nigga. I need my money. Ain't worried about what you're saying. Yeah. Big bank take love bang. Jordan. And playing Carrie. Woo! <laughs> Hold on. Miss Kiara. We also have one more person that's going to join us. He may not say much, but he's also one of the masterminds behind the film, Mr. Mike. Stated earlier, you got to see an exclusive video from DJ EXO of No Sleep MG, as well as Rapper Lot Records, uh, another one of our wonderful partners, Mommy Mogul Productions. Mommy Mogul Productions. And you can also get a wonderful gift bag downstairs for a selective few. Um, in the meantime, make sure you hashtag Dear Frank Movie. We are going to eight different cities, which the cast and crew will talk about. So let's welcome Miss Yvonne Han. Thank you so much. A couple questions. So, how did you guys like the movie? What did you think about it when you were watching it? I liked it a lot. <laughs> I, uh, came together and with this powerhouse performance from Mr. Brian White, I find myself glued to the screen most of the time. It was really exciting uh, to see the story. I know that as Josh and I went through it, we tried, we talked about how it was a dark comedy. It started to get funny to us how, how in love this guy was. And um, we wanted to see if we could fuse all of the elements of, of thriller, horror, action, romance, and drama all into one thing. And uh, I'm proud of how it turned out, so I was really excited to see the, the final product. Wow. It was amazing getting to finally watch it. We did this a movie a while ago. Is that too echoey? It's too echoey? We did it a long time ago, and to, or to finally be on the screen and see it, it's, it's, it was great, and you did a great job. Like, you were so sprung. <laughs> and everybody was so disrespectful to you, but you got them all back. And you are evil. <laughs> but they killed me. Very evil. So it was just, I'm proud of just being a part of this, even though that was a hoe. But it was still, <laughs> my mom can't see this one. But it was, it just was great to see it, because I haven't seen anything like this, like a dark comedy murder mystery who done it. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> um, probably, probably didn't see that coming, huh? I think uh, it, was, it was amazing. I, I truly enjoy watching my castmates, myself, um, in this project. And every time I watched it, it uh, reveals different things that we've all done in the film, and I thought it was pretty neat to watch it again with you guys and actually hear the crowd reaction and the things that you love in it, so I think that's amazing about it. Um, so yeah, I truly, I truly enjoyed it, guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, definitely loved it. Um, it was amazing. It's a, it's a blessing. blessing. So it just uh, came, came all along. God bless. Thank you. Good effort. And we just uh, set our sights on this script and trying to make the best movie we could. And I, I'm really proud of it. I'm happy how it came together. And I'm excited we get to finally share it with the world. Now, now share with us a funny memory that took place on set. There's 
a lot of funny memories that took place on set, um, on the spot. Um, uh, man, there's some stuff we could tell you. Uh, but I guess a, uh, a funny memory would be... Um, Probably the amount of alcohol that was consumed to make this movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of alcohol. Yeah. Drugs. That, that <laughs> was a funny memory. I mean, I don't know if you realize, but that was like some weird concoction of syrup mixed with something else. And and Brian was taking it like a champ. And Brian just drank the shit and he didn't care. He was like, oh, you, let's do another one. That's it. So I, I, maybe I'll pass it off to Brian to kind of tell you a little more about his experience in that regard. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's funny, but uh, we were using B12 and B6 for the uh, cocaine, but it gives you a buzz and it makes your nose run. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, 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 I had Ebola on the days we were doing that. It would just start running and it would just keep running. You couldn't even talk. It would blow down your throat. And, uh, yeah, so that, that was that was a funny that was a moment, but it's funny taking back on it. Wow. You can hear it a couple times in my voice where I can't speak over it. Uh, right. <laughs> it works. You can definitely tell. <laughs> what about you guys? Was this a funny memory on set? There's a lot of behind the scenes thing that we'll have to wait to talk about. I will tell you that, that uh, I found out about this project from Claudia. And one of the funniest things was watching collaborative effort. And, and you have to give for the team. And Claudia is the opposite of her character in this movie, but she really had to go all in to, to bring that to life. So every time we had to shoot a sex scene was, was pretty hilarious watching Claudia <laughs> talk herself into being able to do some of the things. All right, I'm really going to lick all up on this man's head right now. <laughs> all that, that those, those moments, the cop watching her have her conversation with herself the five minutes before she was going to do all these these wild, crazy sex scenes, trying to right. talk herself into getting as crazy as it needed to be for that was hilarious to me, having known her for as many years as I've known her. And, and uh, hats off to this professional right here for pulling it off. We did. So you I'm saying I was a professional when I do jack off a priest in the church. <laughs> you was good at it too. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> I, my mother was asking me like uh, day to day like how things were going on set, and I had to lie to her <laughs> every single day. I'm like, oh, we got a church scene. Um, then I had a scene with a realtor and with a brother and another brother. So it was interesting because. Um, at the time, I was going through a breakup, so I was super emotional, and it just was, but it kind of helped, though. And we had someone else on set that was kind of like barking things out in the middle of a crying scene. That was kind of funny. Yeah, that was a little weird. That was awkward. But it was, it, everybody, we, we hung out. It was a good cast. Everyone was just like, we all added to this. And thank you for coming on board, because you killed it. Thank you. There's one more cast member that I see, Mr. Nick DeToro. Speaking of, speaking of church scenes, he's the priest. You were great. Sorry to your wife. Sadly. I didn't really touch it though. It's like, just because it's like, I swear to God, and only two takes. Those are the funny memories. Trying to figure out how to get in and out of each of these scenes respectfully. You know, I'm married, Nick's married, you know, we were, uh, we're all friends in real life and, uh, you know, it's, it's art, it's movie making, so it's a lot of the, you know, things that go into trying to create scenes like this in a respectful way are hilarious. <laughs> so, it was beautiful. Um, we're going to open the floor for any questions from the audience. I got a question. Hey, y'all did an unbelievable job. I really enjoyed it. And, and all y'all friends, and uh, I had a good time. Uh, hey, and uh, who's this lady? Carrie. Yeah. Carrie. Carrie Schrader. You killed it. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, definitely. <laughs> hey, we have time for about two to three more questions right here. This question's for Brian. How was it uh, work with your uh, your brother once again, Columbus Short? Uh, man, I love working with Columbus. I mean, he is is um, he's one of my the most comfortable actors that I, I can work with. There's a 
We don't have to rehearse anything. We don't have to block anything. It's just we're in, we're in tune and we can shoot very quickly and get to the meat of it very quickly, whether it's a, a tender scene or, or an angry scene or, you know, the, the full spectrum. So I love Columbus. I, I think he's a, a wonderful person and a brilliant actor. Before we move, I would have to say also being in scenes with them, as you guys see, I'm a new face. Um, so to be in a scene with these two men and how powerful they are together, it really makes you have to step up as an actress. And I would have to say it was amazing to be able to play that one big scene that y'all see where everything kind of just turns the whole movie around. Um, like to be in that moment, it was like unreal for me. Like, oh my God, here I am about to do this scene with these two amazing actors that I so respect. So I, I definitely have to thank you guys because y'all pushed me to make that scene be what it is. Oh, now she's being humble. The fifth for now came in and killed the whole movie. Yeah, he did. Kiari is young. And everyone. There was a lot of emotion and comedy. How much of it was improv? Off the dome. For, for me, uh, it was all discussed uh, before we shot it. It was all intentional. Like, we, we pretty much figured out right away that uh, it was so dark that it needed comedy. And so I started calling them as dark comedy right away and, and uh, helped rewrite some of the diary scenes. I, I had seen a movie with Brendan Fraser where he cried on the beach all movie long. I can't even think of what it was, but it was still straight comedy. And I was like, we need that. And, and you know, to, to even it out. Uh, some of the stuff just so over the top and it was funny to me. It was emotionally charged and weighted, but to me, I wanted to add that both there so that it could be enjoyed in a theater where you don't feel afraid to laugh. Like, that's supposed to be fun. Job well done. So, uh, okay. Thank you. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to Brian, for you, you had a lot of like passion, like anger and sadness. Like, what did you do to prepare for this role? Well, I'm a married man, and I, everything I do every single day is about, you know, my wife and my daughter. And I've known Claudia since we were kids. Uh, we're from East Coast, and we've known each other before Hollywood. And so I took, you know, the relationship I'm in now and then extrapolated if, if we had started when we were 18 and took everything that's in my wife and put it in this relationship and then started talking to Claudia about, let's make these circumstances real. What could happen day by day to get us here? And so for me, it was... Somebody I'm very familiar with that I know that I can picture when she was, you know, when we were both younger, and it, it became very real uh, uh, for me, uh, as, as, you know, as, as real as, as uh, before you do the, the, the shooting can be. And uh, and just uh, trusted in my partner here to, to you know, give me the right words right before we shot my scenes, and he was always in my ear. And, uh, and then trust my scene partner, I think Claudia and Carrie and of course Columbus and Nick killed it, so just, you know, uh, put all that together and, and you get what you got on the screen and, and I'm glad that you like it. We're going to have one more question and wrap up. I have another question for you guys. I took notice that um, she was addicted to sex, so I thought she was going to try to start being addicted to being a murderer. You know? <laughs> She was addicted to sex, I got addicted to murder because I wanted to get rid of all the shit. When you start being addicted to sex, I mean, well, she was addicted to sex, she was addicted to murder. So I thought you were just going to start speaking with outside people and find out they were was you being cheated on and start killing them too. <laughs> I like that scene with the therapist because like I think a lot of times we write people off and call them whores or hoes and it is proof that a lot of people that are promiscuous they were victims of sexual abuse like that's what kind of made him still care about her because if this guy just found out that his wife cheated all these guys he'd be like F that me right but he saw how he was conflicted because he knew yeah she did all these things but then she also was a victim herself and then the therapist hit on her about it and also, also the stuff that we didn't read out loud in the diary is, is she's writing about her dad and everything that happened to her. So as her husband who's known her since then, he's like, how did I miss all this? How did I not see this? What did I do to contribute to it? And so he wants to go talk to each one of these people and find out first and foremost who killed, who killed his wife, but also protect her honor. Because this is a woman he loved and he feels like all these people that she's writing about have tainted her, have affected her, especially the doctor. He didn't see his scene, but... That's you know a little sliver into Frank. This is a woman he loves, and nobody's gonna talk bad about her but me, no matter what she does. So he's defending her honor in some twisted way until he's the only one remaining. So, 
Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Brian, I have one question for you. Yes. You've been acting for so many years and with a variety of, for so many roles. So how did you prepare for the role for this movie? Um, well, my specific process is my thing. So I start with the words and I break the script and that. Um, and then I come in with my questions to the writers and the directors and the co-directors um, and start asking them to fill in the gaps, help me fill in the gaps. And then from there, last pieces are with my scene partners because they have their ideas. And that's the last color in the palette that gets added in before action is set. So, Meisner method, uh, there's different techniques, but Meisner is basically reading every word in the script, trying to understand the writer's intent, and then about it. And the good thing about Josh and Mike, they all let us contribute a lot. Like, we saw this many times, and we also gave feedback, we spoke amongst each other, like, what about this, and what about that? And that's, I think that's a unique experience, and because it's, you know, this kind of film, we were able to do that, and that was definitely helpful. Wow. So, so you guys did an amazing job. And thank you, you guys, for coming out. I'm never changing. Jay told me it's up. I know what you're thinking. Middle finger up. You know who I came with.